You know what's annoying about the limit problem below ninjas? There's no real easy shortcut, and you can definitely get this one wrong on your next exam, but I'm here to save you some headaches, so watch until the end so you can crush this like a ninja. For this limit problem here, notice that you can't use a cool trick like L'Hopital's rule, because for the absolute value of the sine of x, how are you gonna take the derivative of that at x equals zero? It's not differentiable. So maybe we need to use a longer method that's not ideal, but we're gonna get through it. So for this problem here, what I want you to think about is we can break this limit problem up into two parts because we're dealing with an absolute value function. For the first part, I wanna approach x equals zero from just the right of zero. So I'm gonna use a zero plus notation here, meaning that we're only gonna care about values of x that are positive, but very, very, very small, like 0 0.0005, et cetera. With that being said, that's going to allow us to rewrite this expression in such a way where we can take out the absolute value sign here and write this a bit differently. Do you see how we can do that? Here's a hint, take the sine of x function, the one that doesn't have an absolute value, and just graph it and notice what happens just to the right of the origin. Okay, so maybe you didn't see it, but we can just drop the absolute value altogether because just to the right of the origin, so for very small and positive values of x, the sine of x already gives you an output that's positive. So why do you even need an absolute value sign around it? So I'm gonna go ahead and drop that here. And now we have sine of x minus sine of x on the top, which will just give you zero as your limit. Now, here's a question for you in the comments below. Why is the limit zero and not something like zero divided by zero here, which is undefined? Okay, so moving on, we're now gonna approach the origin from the left-hand side. So for values of x that are really small and little negative, like negative 0.0004, et cetera. Before I get into that, if you haven't already and you're enjoying this video, be sure to ninja kick that subscribe button and also check out some cool swag in the links below so you can rock them on your next exam. For this case, we have a little bit of more work to do because when we try very small values that are negative for x, it's not so clear, right, what the sine of x function looks like with this absolute value. So once again, I'll encourage you to look at this graphically and see what a sine of x look like for values like negative 0 0.0004, you know, these negative values just to the left of the origin, and think about how we can rewrite this expression in such a way that doesn't use an absolute value sign. Okay, so if you don't already see it, remember that the sine of x function itself is going to be negative in this case, right? But then we also know that the absolute value is taking a negative and it's making it positive. So isn't it the same as taking a negative and multiplying it by negative one? With that being said, you can rewrite it as follows. You can drop the absolute value, and we know that for slightly negative values of x here, the absolute value of the sine of x is the same as the negative sine of x expression. Now, when I simplify this one, we're going to get negative 2 sine of x on the numerator, and remembering that with the rules of limits, I can take this negative 2 and bring it outside of the limit, giving me a fraction here, which is going to be the sine of x over x cubed, and... Oh, well, that's a little weird. We're kind of stuck here, right? What do we do? I mean, this is a little frustrating. Aha, but guess what? Sometimes when you have a fraction like this, you might want to play around and rewrite it in a way that's a product of parts. So why don't I go ahead and do that, ninjas? I'm going to rewrite sine of x over x cubed in such a way where I have sine of x over x times 1 over x squared. Totally fine, right? Now, why am I doing this? Well, check out this sine of x over x expression. We're approaching zero for x, yeah? Do you remember anything from your class in pre-calc about what the limit as x approaches zero of sine of x over x is? Okay, if you haven't seen this before, that's okay. Check out this other video. But this is a very famous limit that comes from the squeeze theorem. And this is also why, whether you're doing it from the squeeze theorem, why you're looking, whether you're looking at the Taylor series, You'll notice too that for very small values of x that are really close to zero, sine of x is approximately the same as x. The limit as x approaches zero of sine of x over x is one. And it doesn't matter that we were using a left-hand approach notation above because if the limit exists for x equals zero, we already know that if you approach from the left or the right, it's one, right? 
I'm going to go ahead and plug this value in above. So now we now we're dealing with an expression where we're trying to find negative two times the limit as x approaches zero from the left of just one over x squared times that one. And this is pretty obvious. The denominator is just growing and growing. So this is going to be a limit that results in infinity times this negative two. In other words, this limit approaches negative infinity. In other words, it doesn't converge to a value. And because that's not the same as what we got above for the right-hand side limit, we know that our answer means that this limit didn't exist. Now for the next problem,